North Korea's socialist system provides citizens with free medical care and free public education. By the Social Insurance Law of 1947, North Korea introduced free health care for workers and their families. The country now offers a complete and comprehensive free health care system to all its citizens, including all the steps of health care from prevention, diagnosis, medicines to hospitalization. Special programs are also introduced for maternal care and for the protection of workers' safety. The best hospitals in the country are located in the capital Pyongyang, and we were given access to some so that we could know more about the healthcare system inside the DPRK. This is Children's Hospital in the capital Pyongyang, opened in 2013. The officials say that this hospital was built to serve as a model for other hospitals in the country to follow. That, of course, doesn't mean everything is going smoothly here. This facility provides a wide range of free medical and educational services to children. But doctors here are seriously concerned about the sanctions that have targeted the much-needed medicines for these innocent children. Dr. So Young, who is mainly in charge of the hospital's online medical service, says sanctions are putting children's health at risk. Sanctions have even targeted the exchange of medical services between the DPRK and other countries. They aim to destroy the whole country by depriving our children, who are the future of our country, of proper medical services. The U.S. calls itself the champion of human rights, but easily violates it here. According to the World Bank, hospital beds in North Korea stood at 13.2 in 2012, placing the country among the top three nations with the largest number of hospital beds per 1,000 people. The country boasts an extensive health system, providing one general practitioner per 130 families, as well as nationwide maternal and child health coverage. Despite all the limitations we have to endure regarding our exchange of knowledge with other countries, we've done our best to keep up with the latest advancements. We're constantly working towards attaining more independence from the import of much-needed medicines and equipment. This maternity hospital is also a medical education center where nurses and midwives receive proper training to be prepared to work in different cities across the country. The hospital also has a neonatal intensive care unit with numerous wards such as dental and breast cancer. Here traditional Korean medicines are used in 30% of all given treatments. Government hopes better healthcare would lead to stronger willingness towards having larger families. Almost all the babies in the capital Pyongyang are born here in this hospital and the government provides incentives to those who decide to have large families. And symbolically, a golden ring and a silver dagger are given to those parents who are having triplets and quads. In total contrast with what many people may think of literacy rate in North Korea, the latest census conducted in the country indicates that 100% of the people are literate. Under the country's compulsory education system, the citizens are required to complete the 12-year education that is free of charge. We had the chance to visit a kindergarten that is mostly chosen for journalists and tourists to visit. Our North Korean government miners had already told us about how surprisingly talented the kids are. Honestly, their performances were more than just surprising.
motto for the kids in North Korea is we are the happiest in the world. They take their obsession for perfection in live performances to another level in a place called Children's Palace in the capital Pyongyang. Discipline is practiced at its highest level. Here in the University of Foreign Languages, I was welcomed by Persian-speaking students who walked us around the university, showing the facilities that are provided for the students to master different languages, including the language of a country they consider as their sworn enemy, the U.S. As you know, English is the enemy language, as you know. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's also the world language is known. So many people in our country, they are learning English. And they also learn what kind of a culture English speaking people, English, uh, speaking people have. Okay, and, uh, but what we are doing is that uh, we are letting them know what kind of culture they have. But uh, we are teaching them what is good and what is bad. The 25-year-old Li Yunhuan tells me about her motive behind learning English alongside Persian. I have been studying English for 10 years. The U.S. has been threatening and sanctioning our country for more than half a century. I want to master English so that I can be useful to my country when the enemy knocks on the door. Despite offering a wide range of languages and different fields of study, the general educational principles strictly reject any kind of cultural influence conveyed through learning materials. This is the iconic Grand People's Study House that faces the famous Kim Il-sung Square and was built in 1982. Inside, people get a chance to access the country's national intranet and log into a number of websites that are available to them. Education in North Korea is not just restricted to what is taught in schools. North Koreans also receive social education, including family life and the broader range of human relations within the society. In libraries, a wide range of topics are found in the shelves, but the majority of the books are the ones promoting the communism and the socialist system. This is the greatest library inside the DPRK, and it has been modernized by computer systems for better categorizations of a wide range of topics and also the facilitation of people's access to information. North Korean government takes pride in its ability to maintain 100% literacy rate in the country, but still, strong criticisms exist regarding the heavy restrictions the government imposes on people's access to information and the fact that Internet as we know it is reserved for just a few individuals and institutions. Hamid Jawani for Press TV in Pyongyang, North Korea.